All right, I'm going to do a quick overview of what I use to make this desert world by popular request. So the step one is to load up my uh, sparsely annotated world machine template. Um, I had to add in a bit extra at the bottom here, but we'll get to that. So basically how it works is step one is to create the lowlands, the hills, which I do here. I just create, I just draw a big grid and then I pass it into this, this series of devices and that creates a nice lowland noise. Then I have my plateaus. So I draw the plateaus, which are just very primitive shapes and they go through all of this manipulation and eventually this becomes the plateau mask. And then we take the maximum of those two and that becomes our primitive terrain. Uh, it goes, there you have the option to draw uh, water levels here, but that doesn't matter because it's a desert. It goes through erosion. It goes through this thing, which uh, creates dune noise. So this is passed into a displacement machine to create dunes. And then I put that into an advanced pylon to get the dune noise. And then I multiply the lowlands by this to create the dunes. This is something I added onto my template just for this. We got erosion, we got thermal weathering. Thermal weathering is very important for uh, these sort of slopes at the bottom. More erosion. Uh, selective glaciation, also called ocean star glaciation, uh, based on a uh, suggestion from ocean star to create more flat playable area. This looks very intimidating, but basically what this is doing is it's creating uh, five random boulder shapes to scatter around the world. And so these green lumps are where the boulders are scattered. Uh, so those have a selective filter for where the boulders are scattered. Here you can see the before and after of the boulderization. This is to make sure uh, the slopes are broken up a little bit. Uh, and then finally we have uh, the underwater smoothing, which is passed for this and some additional smoothing, which is passed for this. And that creates this output, which is the terrain shape. So next that is imported into world machine. You can see the finished product here. So what you would do is you go file import world from height map. You would choose uh, the map that you've just exported and you would clamp it until it looks good. I think I used like 20 and 260 and water level 62 to get no water and you can see uh, here I have the color-coded heights. You can see the, the dunes came out quite well. You can see the plateaus are flat and buildable. Um, so once you've imported that, so I use the premium river script to generate the rivers. It costs $20. There's also a free one that's not as great, but that also works. Um, and then so what I do is I paint grass on the rivers and then I use the free uh, script that uh, expands the layer. It, it, so um, basically it's a marching noise, I've forgotten what, what you call it, but basically 50% chance to expand, uh, run 20 times and that creates the river. Um, so then I paint sand everywhere. And then what I believe I did is I created a selection for just the, just the areas I wanted to become Mesa. And then I ran some global operations, very useful global, global operations. But before that I made some custom terrain. So, um, it's useful to give them numbers so they appear in order. So this first one, for example, is what I called sandy cotta. It's sand and white terracotta, and then it becomes eventually plain terracotta, and then the sand disappears is just terracotta, and then eventually it adds granite. And then basically what you do is you press uh, Control G, uh, and then you press Fill with the terrain type. I want to fill it with sandy cotta anywhere uh, inside the selection anywhere above uh let's say 15 degrees because uh at zero degrees we still want it to be sand and then basically you choose values you choose values that look good you press Control 3 to go into the 3d preview and take a look at that and then you export it and um happy days and you take a look at it in game you see how it looks and then based on that you uh iterate over it um for exporting it uh, I, what I do is I just um, paint the biomes um, that I want Minecraft to populate on. So this is all desert. This is all uh, badlands and wooded badlands um, in a sort of noise formation. If I highlight uh, just wooded badlands, uh, you'll be able to see it only on biome. Uh, so where's wooded badlands? There. 
So here you can see the wooded badlands are indeed noise. There's gaps between it, so it doesn't all come out looking the same. And then basically uh, what you do during export is you turn on allow Minecraft to populate the entire terrain. And this will tell this will basically go Minecraft will look at the biomes and will go, OK, based on this biome, I'm going to do this. I'm going to. And in this case, it adds trees to the wooded badlands. It adds um, it adds uh, seagrass to the river. Um, I painted the river as well, I should have mentioned that. And it adds uh, cactuses to the desert. Uh, you can't see here because I haven't loaded all the chunks. That's one disadvantage, you have to load the chunk for Minecraft to populate it. And you can see them in the loaded chunks, there are some cactuses, there's uh, grass, and then you can see the trees here. Um, I would probably, if I spent more time on this, I would change uh, these uh, one block slopes these are quite boring to play on and maybe the noise on the top it looks like a bad camo pattern but other than that i th i'm very happy with this it took only about half an hour to create start to finish and yes that is the workflow